Hello viewers, update 1.44 has just dropped on Gran Turismo 7, including this iconic car returning the Toyota GT1. Sadly, no new track in this update, which is a bit of a shame, but let's go through it. So the Toyota GT1 is here, it's in the Legend Car dealership, 2.5 million. Amazing to see that, 844 performance points in group two, quite crucially. I suppose that goes well with the Mercedes CLK, but we can test this. Okay, it is time to give this car a go. So this is one of the new events they've added, the World Touring Car 900. It's kind of weird looking at the performance points here. It's not that far off a of Sauber C9, which is 852. It's only eight less. It's, it's got more than the 787B. CLK is here, 809. So it's an interesting mix. It's really interesting that it's in group two and not one. Group one and group two are kind of messed up the way that they work. It's definitely something that could be better on this game. 10 laps around Le Mans. This could get quite legendary. Oh, look at that. What an iconic car. We... I feel like it's... I feel like it's 2002 again. Look at this. I mean, that is an iconic, iconic car. Really good to have it back. Let's go into the cockpit. Those clouds look like they're... Oh, rain's coming. Rain is coming, guys. And I think we need a front bias on this car. Look at that wiper blade. It looks very, uh, very unusual. No one's gone in. Okay, we're just going to stay out then. We'll stay out. I think that's the right call. It is raining, but it's not strong enough. The, the grip is still there. It's always good when they add a bit of dynamic weather, a bit of dynamic time. Whoa. Car snapped there. Okay. So here's the leaders of this race. This is kind of weird because... Um, This is a 900 rated event. So I would have thought we'd see some group one cars in here. The question has to be, will it be balanced with other cars? Or another car? It's only got one true competitor in group two and that's CLK, but we'll work out if it's actually got balance. But you can see this car has a lot of rear tire wear. Definitely a front bias, I think, would help. But there we go. Finally, completed the event. 100% record on the Toyota GT1. The new time trial that has been added features, of course, the lovely. Toyota GT1 around Fuji. Okay, so let's let's kind of pick a target here. 31.1 is the world's number one at the moment. So I think getting within a second of that would be good. So a low 32. So we're aiming for a low sort of... Let's get into the 32s at least. That's where we need to be. Yeah, the 150 boards. Seems about right. Ooh, big moment. 33.4 or 33.5 essentially. We're getting there. We're getting there with the lap time. Just need to get a clean lap here. Don't hit this bollard on the exit. That's five tenths. That should be a mid to high 32. I mean, this 32.2 from Marquis is a very good lap. 32.6, okay. Four temps to find. 
Where can we find it? That is the question. I think this left hand coming up, there's a lot of time in it. Not easy to get right though. Nearly two tenths. Let's do four. Get in there. There's definitely a lot of time coming out of that corner. I think you ought to keep the revs of the car up. Otherwise, it doesn't accelerate nicely. Let's do three. God damn it, I lost a tenth in that final corner. Went a tiny bit quicker there with that slide. Kind of wild. Come on. Thirty two one. I could def I, I think more pushing, get into the thirty ones. But that is not too bad. But I could easily be in this sort of region here, I think, with a bit more time. Thirty one eight, thirty one nine. Yeah, these guys at the top are just like... I mean, we can watch their replay. That's a good idea, actually. I want to watch their replay. What a beautiful car. What a beauty. Let's see what he does. Oh, holds that gear really long. Okay, that's something. Brakes a bit later than me. First gear over the curb. Second gear. Yeah. More curb. Carry the speed. Really wide. What line do we take through here? Lift. Long lift. Yeah. I seem... Yeah, okay. So I seem to work that out. That is the quickest way through there. It's just doing it a bit better. Second gear out of there. Really wide on the curb. Minimise the straight. On the shadow. 48. Uh, three through there all over that what gear here second yeah because it is an older car i think you do want if you can minimize that first to second gear shift then it does help second gear first rotation second okay i could have been close to the apex there you can go really wide first gear back to second on the power a lot earlier it takes a more curved exit so to be honest i think i worked out what he's doing in my little session there the, the basic principles of how to get that lap done quickly i could just carry more exit speed i think but he's just obviously better at the line i think i worked out the lines and everything but okay change car i'm gonna go with the clk gt1 seems fast on the straights okay well this will be a really good test We'll find out which is better. Oh, God. Got to be super careful here. 
Right, drag race. Whoa, bit of contact. Oh, get a bit close. Oh, there's like four of us here. Three abreast. No, oh, I've been pushed. Oh, sorry, I've been pushed. <laughs> right. What's behind me? Audi. Audi's somewhat keeping up. Interesting. Well, that GT1, look at that. Yeah, no, GT1's quick. GT1's quick in a straight line. We're about to directly compare in a minute. Down this back straight, or the main straight. Oh, right. right, here we go. Well, I've done him. He's coming back at me. Yeah, it's got good speed at the end of the straight. Oh, bro, come on. He's on the grass. I keep up with it in the slipstream. But yeah, that GT1 is... I think it has slightly better straight line. This car feels a bit easier to drive in the corners. It feels more stable. Maybe that's the balance difference. This car, Mercedes has more stability. Slightly less straight line speed. I don't know about this McLaren F1. Like That never seems to feature, does it? In Group 2 races. Just like never see anyone ever use that. Yeah, I'd say this... I mean, it's a different track I'm driving on compared to Interlagos, but this car feels a bit more stable compared to the Toyota. Toyota's a bit leery on the power if you don't get the exit right. This is the race, guys. This is where it's at. This is what it's all about. Special stage Route X. I think Gran Turismo 1 didn't have this car, I think. Someone might want to check that. Was that wrong information or something? Did I say it first appeared in Gran Turismo 2 and is featured in all sub subsequent mainline games except for GT Sport? So the GT1 wasn't in GT1, the game. Gran Turismo 1 came out in 1997, so that's obviously why, which is before the car was even made. Oops, sorry. Sorry, mate. Didn't see you there, mate. How quick can a GT1 go in reverse? That's the crucial question we all need to know the answer to. I think I have a hundred mile an hour here. <laughs> it's going really quick. Hundred and twenty. Oh, J turn. That was a nice turn. That blue livery is cool. I like that blue livery. I think the red one's better, but that blue one is cool. It says, support me. Come on. Yes. Oh, look at that. What a push. The speed difference between getting bumped and not getting bumped is massive. It's like 20 mile an hour. Oh, here they come. Oh. I'm keeping my momentum here. Just got back in front. It's building up. The anticipation here. In the special stage route X Grand Prix. We're moving our way to the front. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yes! Woo! What a battle! Scintillating battle here. Going for the front. Oh, it's free abreast. The vicious is going back. Oh, I've not got a pusher. 
Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, look at this. Look at how many cars are out. I'm going low. I'm going low. Pushing the blue one. Oh, goodness me. The Spaniards got inside me. Oh, it's three abreast at the lead. Baby, that was almost a big, big collision. Oh! Here we go. The Spaniard did it. 0.4 between first and eight. <laughs> in other news in the update, we have engine swaps for the Lance Evos. So for example, the Evo 9 here, there is just one engine swap for all of them. And it's the Evo final group B, puts the power up to 521 horsepower. There's also some limited edition decals, which are these ones here, as you can see. And then some minor changes towards World Circuits Multiplayer Showcase, GT Auto, and some other things. Nothing too, uh, nothing too major here to see. I suppose it brings the question, is this a good update? I think the GT1 is an amazing car to have, but overall it doesn't really change too much. It has been quite a few months now since the last track was added. Only four new locations have been added to GT7. Grand Valley Highway 1, Road Atlanta, Watkins Glen, and Lake Louise. We've had some configurations added to like Nürburgring, Catalonia and Spa, but I think the overall amount of tracks is something that they could definitely improve in this game. It would be great to see some more classic circuits, but even tracks like Silverstone, which have been in Gran Turismo before. So whilst this update adds an amazing car, it would be great to see more coming very soon in the future. Let's not forget this letter to the community, which was written pretty much exactly two years ago. Now, a lot of the things they said they would add in this, they did add. But there are some certain things that weren't added like this addition of more endurance races to missions including 24 hour races those are still yet to be added to the game so i'm sure there's still lots of things that they have in the pipeline which they haven't got around to yet but hopefully it doesn't take too long let me know your thoughts on update 1.44 i'll see you next time goodbye